I distress a whole lot of furniture and I finally found a way to help with the more detailed things that I distress. I use a lot of chalk paint so with that I distress a lot. This is a rotary tool. It's an electric rotary tool. It's also known as a Dremel is the brand name for the uh, name brand one. Um, but this is one I got off eBay and I paid less than $15 for it. So it came with these attachments and then some and it had a whole bunch of great ratings. So I bought it and I'm really glad I did. It has a lot of different size bits and attachments and it's this easy to change them. You just push in the button and then put your new one in there. So when you're deciding which one to use on your furniture, you can kind of see which one fits in the grooves and is going to touch the parts you want it to touch and not touch the parts you don't want it to. For instance, this is a fine cone shape that will get down into the crack itself. And this round one will do more of the outside edges and less of the inside crack. So you just have to find one that works right for the part of the furniture you're doing and it will be different as you go through and do a piece of furniture you will be changing bits out. This sandpaper bit is the one that would be the most used for doing the edges like this. Before I even powered this up I practiced it without having it on just so I can see if I can stay along the lines and the grooves and it will be harder once it gets powered up of course. And even though I've chosen the bit already I'm just kind of testing to see how it's going to do inside these cracks while holding it like this. The great thing about distressed furniture is that you can cover up your mistakes should you have any and nobody will ever know. I'm using the fine cone attachment to get inside the little lines of the front of these side tables. Make sure you get a rotary tool with a variable speed control. I believe all of them have them but it just makes it easier to control what you're doing. If it's going super fast, it's harder to control. So I do not have mine cranked up probably ever. I just have it at the point where I can still control what's going on. At times it's kind of like drawing with a great big pen, but you can really get down in these little places to distress that there is just no way you could get down in there with sandpaper. It's actually kind of fun and kind of addicting. It's like kind of like coloring a coloring book in a way. Plus, I find this a whole lot more enjoyable than using sandpaper. Now I'm just choosing all kinds of shapes from my assortment of little attachments that I got because, because it's fun. And this one um, seems to go down right down inside these lines. Now here I'm going to mess up. And like I said, this is the beauty of doing chalk paint because if you dab that, Nobody will ever know that it was there because you are doing a distress piece and the nature of distressed is that it is beat up. My top tips for this are to go slow. It will take you a while to get a feel for this tool and don't be freaked out if you slip off and make a mistake because you can just paint over it like I said. It will leave the same type of dust as sanding so be ready for that as well. Use the speed control to your advantage. Use this with the lowest setting that will still get the job done. And you will start to go faster as you get more used to the tool, but even at a slow setting, it will get this done really quick. I wouldn't necessarily call this a replacement for sandpaper. I would call it a complement to sandpaper and I will do almost all the distressing with this and then the larger areas of this piece, I will use some sandpaper on. I know there's no way I could possibly get into all of these nooks and crannies that I am with this with sandpaper. So this just makes me really happy and it's a lot of fun. At times it reminds me of drawing a picture or tracing things and accenting them. You can see I'm um, distressing inside of these little decorative pieces on here and it just looks cool and it's a lot of fun. So that's it. I'm going to give distressing with the rotary tool two thumbs up and I will be doing this more in the future. I think more so on the very detailed pieces like this. The simple pieces, probably not, 
but anything that's got some detail, I think this is the ticket for sure. So that's it for today. I'll be back soon with more ideas and shortcuts and different ways to do stuff. So thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the video links at the end of this video to see more cool stuff. Thank you. Don't forget to keep your paintbrushes clean and hold your head high. Bye.